down 14, bro. We come charging back. We get the W. Well, l- let's just start in the beginning and just say the way it really started. Shea started in that first quarter, in that first, like, three minutes of that first quarter with three turnovers, like getting the ball picked from him right away. And the Clippers were setting the tone, and it looked like Shea was being left behind. And and I hate saying that because, it, you know, Shea's where he was drafted at, and you know he wants to play good. You know he wants to have a good game in L.A. And it looked like they were just picking on him out there, like they were the bigger brother. And all of a sudden, Coach calls timeout. And gets control of Shea, gets you know talking to him, and Shea has one turnover the rest of the game, one, and it's because he learns from his mistakes. He understands that if they're going to trap me like this, then I need to get rid of the ball quicker. I need to understand where the ball is coming from. I need to understand where the slap and the the, the stabs from their hands are coming from, so I can take care of the ball. And then he drops thirty one points, guys, thirty one points, and it's just like bam, he's on a whole new level. Everybody's trying to catch up to him. And then the defense that we played, bro. This defense was insane. You got got to hang your hat on the defense end. Lou Dort um, is able to draw the um, illegal screen down the stretch, and then he plays, you know, that sticky glove defense on Kwai, makes it so he doesn't even get a shot off in regulation, and we win the game at the buzzer. Bro, like you mentioned, Shea's 31, just absolute masterclass as he got going. He was able to really put that fourth quarter on his back, put the whole team on his back, and carried us to victory. Incredible job by him. But really, as we went down the stretch, we saw amazing minutes from a number of the role players. Um, We saw Lindy Waters, Aaron Wiggins, Isaiah Joe, um, Olivier Sarr. All those guys played good minutes. Really, really good minutes in the second half for us. I mean, I just felt like we're really critical. Jay Will got in foul trouble early he played the whole first half pretty much or but he never got back into the rotation in the second half he hit a couple of threes back to back threes though right exactly he did what we needed him to do early and then coach liked the looks we were getting later he saved you know him because he had four fouls but then he never went back to him why it's because other people were stepping up right yeah and you saw giddy on the bench at the end of the game too and that was not a knock on giddy giddy was having a great game it was the Isaiah Joe hitting the free throws. It was Shea. It was Dort. All these other guys that were playing at a high level, he needed out in the game. Yeah. You know? Giddy, dude. And let's talk was, about again. Giddy real quick. 1366 yeah, yeah. and a couple yeah. of buckets with Paul George on him down the stretch where he just put him on his back and he said, I'm a bigger player, which was shocking. Yeah. But but we, here's the thing about Josh, right? Josh is trying to flex on, on Paul George. And, and, and we've seen it pick, him pick on other players before mm-hmm. that are slightly smaller than him and, 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 and less body weight. And it's what I call the Larry Bird look. Right, you know? it was. Like, it was. And, and, and it's, it's getting that guy that's much smaller on you than you, much smaller even by a couple inches even, but is, is much smaller and there's no way he can stop you. And you just put him on your hip and you just go downhill. Mm-hmm. And, and you create that physical contact that they can't handle. And I think that's what's so important about what Josh was doing. And, and the fact is, is that that's the light at the end of the tunnel, that those, those uh, sp- um, awesome spurts of moments with Josh where it's like, holy shit, you know? And it's like, boom, 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 three or four in a row. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like two assists and two big buckets. And it's like, okay, this is what we're getting with Josh. That's why it's so important to develop him and keep him in that starting rotation because Josh is the future of the NBA. You know, Shea is the future of the NBA. J-Dub is the future of the NBA. What J-Dub J-Dub did last night, 20 points, and he was dunking the ball like a motherfucker out there. It was insane. It was was insane, bro. You got to kick in eight rebounds. Uh, Three of those were offensive. Three assists, one steal, one block for J-Dub. So he's getting it done on both ends. Really, though, as the game got, you know, down the stretch on the offensive end, he looked like he understood the shot clock situation. He understood what he needed to do to make sure he got a shot off. He was knocking things down. You're right, bro. It was just incredibly intelligent basketball, and I felt like it was the perfect game to show the Clippers what they could have had. Yeah, with with the two uh, 51 points against them right there, that's half of our points. Um, We dropped again with uh, our two best players at this point in the season, and it's really just impressive. J-Dub is really making it known. Like, he deserves that rookie of the year. We've been saying it since, what, December, November, that he needed to be in that conversation because he's that good of a player. And I, I, I still look at him and how, how he has been able to develop his game into molding into exact, exactly what the Thunder need is the most impressive thing, man. Uh, I said it earlier. I, I felt like uh, uh, J-Dub was uh, getting close to having 
um, a, a defensive season like uh, what we've seen with Dort in the past, what Dort's ha- having this year. Obviously, Dort is the best ISO defender in the league, but when it comes to a team defense, you're watching J-Dub really excel at that, whether it's block shots, steals, whatever it is. He's making himself known as one of the best team defenders in the league, and that's something that's it's really impressive. Yo, and Olivier Saar got some minutes early on. It looked like, well, maybe these minutes were because Coach was trying to find a replacement for J-Will, but down the stretch... Mm. He was playing because he was playing good. Um, one play, he ended up with two blocks, but one play, it was Kwai and the basket. And I've never seen Kwai get blocked quite like that. He just didn't expect Saar to be able to close the gap and then ha- extend his length and then jump all at the same time. It was like Kwai didn't even have a chance at the basket, but half a second before he shot the basket, you couldn't even see a defender in his way. So yeah. Saar just explodes, blocks the shot, and that was kind of how this whole game went. We would get down to this point where traditionally late in games, traditionally late in shot clocks, teams are like slowing the ball down, making sure they're attacking the glass, and really punishing us. With mm. this game, they were trying to do that, but we were finding guys that were out there fighting, like literally fighting for rebounds, like everything except for throwing fists. They were shoving, they were pushing, they were grabbing, they were pulling, they were doing anything it took to get the rebounds. Some of them went our way, but enough of them did to win. Of of course, things didn't go our way. There was that one where Paul George got hurt, where um, Dort just did not give up on the rebound Mm. until, you know, the ball popped out. The ref called the foul. It was a foul. It was a very late foul call, but it was the right call. Paul George was ended up ended up like hurting his knee we're not sure what's wrong with that but my point is we never gave up on any ball we continued to lay it out there all game and we did that for 48 minutes and we came away with a w yeah and 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 something that i i watched on j our jj reddick show about um j dub about if you compare paulo and j dub if you um pair the advanced stats Mm -hmm. that j dub is always um, is going is leading in almost every single advanced every stat them, yeah. uh, on Paulo, right? And yeah. then I started thinking about our team, right, and the hustle plays and all that other stuff. And I started thinking about I was like, our team is elite in the NBA in the uh, advanced stats, in the yeah. charges, in the you know all these other things that we do, guys, so well. Mm-hmm. We're elite. That means that any of our players, if you look at them, it's Isaiah Joe, it's Shea, it's Dort, it's J Dub, it's J Will. All of them are going to be leading in these advanced stats. And that's what's so insane about this, guys, is that we've built a team around hustle. We've built a team around heart. We've built a team around that, what Sam Presti calls that that um, blue blood, you know, and that Oklahoma City blue blood, you know, like willing to do whatever it takes to get a win. And we watched that last night, man. We watched them play knockdown defense. We watched them play uh, uh, great uh, taking advantage of the shot selection that we're getting. You know, it, it, listen, we took advantage of them. We took advantage of their defensive matchup. We made them in that fourth quarter go small. Batum was the biggest guy on their team uh, in that fourth quarter because they had to stay up with us. And the only way to do that was pulling out a big man. This is this is a top-tier team in the NBA trying to play with us, guys. Mm-hmm. That's what's insane right now. We're 8-2 and two in the last t- um, 10, guys, 8-2. and two. This is this is crazy. We're one of two teams that has that record in the NBA. The other team is the 76ers. Okay. That is it, guys. That is how elite we are right now. Yeah, and the Sixers are ranked number one in the power rankings. In the last rankings, we were ranked number twelve. And I know some Wait people might... Hold on. Hey, back up there. Wait, we were ranked number twelve. What's our what's our seed right now? Eighth, right? Um, I, you know, I haven't checked since we won the game, right? So you yeah. always gotta like look with the new but, updates. So so they're saying that we're better than all but what, like four teams in the East or something like that? And, well, and the Clippers were one of the teams that were ranked in front of us. And we got another game against them coming up. So there's no guarantees wow. that we'll actually move in front of them. But like last episode, we were making the claim that we're a contender. And I know that some people would balk at that. But a number of the teams that are around us, t- people want to co- um, make the argument that they are contenders. And yeah. there are teams that are, we're in front of that could get hot and put themselves in a you know contender category. So I don't see why we shouldn't be in that category if we can continue to win. Obviously, if we don't, then that says enough. But if we do win, bro, we need to claim it. We need to say right here, right now, we're a threat to get out of the first round of the playoffs, not just out mm-hmm. of the play-in. Hey, listen, we, we are. I've been, we've been saying it for a while though. We if we don't want to, nobody want nobody wants to play us in the playoffs, man. Nobody. 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 And in a seven-game series series. 
people are going to be scared shitless against us. And I think that's what the key of looking at it is that if we're playing in a seven game series, there's no way, in my opinion, we don't win in a seven game series in the first round. All right. So if we take the first round and we win the first round, right? That means that we're saying that this team is a legit contender because if you're one of eight teams left in the NBA, you're a contending um, team. Think about that, guys. We think that this team is a top eight team, and this team will be sitting in a position as long as we're healthy to win the first round of the playoffs. And that's what's so crazy about this, man. Book it, everybody. Write it down in your calendars. Make sure your schedule stays open because we motherfucking are here to play ball. And make sure you guys take some time and listen to how we went from being rebuilder to contender in just two years. Where do we click, Dave? Right here, baby.